Welcome back. My name is Joaquin Lone Launch. Thanks for tuning back in with us. Um, last time we actually started to do the uh, geometric design work as far as the TP. Uh, we're going to continue on with our design work and we're going to continue on how to show you do uh, Native American regalia. Um, the last time we did this, you know, we started out doing design work. And today on this show, we're, I'm actually going to show you how to transfer your designs to heap on. Now, heap on you can find at most Walmarts, Hobby Lobbies, Joann's Fabrics. Um, there are actually two types of heap ons. There's actually a heap on heavy and a heap on light. Um, preferably, I like to use the heavy. I like the, a little bit of the stiffness with my material. Um, but if you're going to actually uh, stack material onto material, it's preferably that you would actually use the heat bond light. The reason I'm saying is that the heat bond heavy, after a while, it'll start to gunk up your needles, and after a time period, it'll actually be harder to sew on because the material is more stiffer. Um, so if you want to go with the light, uh, it's better for bigger designs. As far as this piece here, uh, when I talk about stacking, what I'm talking about is interlaying uh, material on top of material. Um, as you see, this one actually has uh, a lot of different pieces on it, and every different color is actually a different, uh, different piece of material. Um, you'll see that uh, the darker brown is um, of the body of this buffalo uh, is actually um, right below this material on top of this. So that's what I'm talking about, stacking. So in these pieces here, I use a lot of actual heat bond uh, light. Um, only thing is working with broadcloth, it is kind of hard to actually get your glue on there. So on the bottom pieces, I use he uh, heat bond heavy. Uh, but on these other topper pieces, that's when I use the heat bond light. Okay, and continuing on, once you start to learn with a uh, heat bond, you'll also uh, start to learn about the materials that you're working with. Um, I preferably like to work with satins. Um, this one, actually, if you look at the buffalo, it's actually a felt material, which is really cool because I thought when, uh, when I found this, I thought to use this material would be perfect because the felt actually almost looks like actually buffalo hair in a way. So I, I found this one and I also found this one at the same time. So I bought a bunch of both of this and it, um, the design came out where I wanted to. It makes it kind of more realistic. Um, the other thing that uh, you'll learn working with uh, material is you'll learn uh, your temperatures. Uh, some uh, materials are very delicate and the higher the temperature, the, the um, more vulnerable they are to heat. And me, you know, growing, actually doing like a, a design work, I've learned in the past uh, to watch your temperature because you can burn right through the material itself and pretty much you just wasted all the material. Now to recap, last week we, we started doing our design work and I had show, showed you actually how to trace the designs and um, to do the measurements of a geometric TP. It's one of the easiest designs I know. Um, pretty simple. Uh, like I said, you don't have to actually be like artistic to actually do this design. Um, this one, very simple. Um, what we have here, you know, we have the top of the TP, we have the outer part of the TP, and we started doing some internal design work. Um, let me pull this out to the side so you can guys can see this. Um, we have another TP and actually the other bases of it. Uh, we're going to continue on with this. I'm going to start doing a little bit more design work to make it more detailed. And from there, we're going to actually transfer it onto our heat bond. And if we get enough time, we're going to transfer it onto the material. Uh, with that said, uh, let's recap on actually how we did our design work. Um, when we first started out with this, this TP, um, like I said, you know, the most easiest part is actually this is just a rectangle. What we'll do is actually chop it up internally. So if you can see our rectangle, uh, you just take your pieces here. And that's how we started off with our geometric TP. And from there, what we did is we made uh, duplicates of this, uh, this centerpiece and chopped it up and then we made uh, a duplicate of this piece and then we chopped it up and made it to the smaller piece and continue on, continue on, and continue on. Uh, from here, let's see, the TP with the inner like design work should look something like this. And we fold these up real quick. Just like so. Now, once we start to sew this, usually what I like to do is I'll have all my pieces cut out um, after we transfer the heat bond onto the material. Um, and the cool part about heat bond is, you know, you can do just about any design you want. Uh, preferably that, you know, this allows you to uh, pretty much trace anything you want. 
um, once you actually uh, use the adhesive on some material, uh, you have to let it cool. Usually you give it probably like a uh, couple of minutes. Um, if usually when I'm working, um, I let it cool for like probably 30 seconds because I'm working really fast. But I don't like to use uh, 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 when it's really hot because it can burn your fingers and I've burnt my fingers many times using it. You know, there are many, many late nights that I've actually spent working with heat bond and working with design work. And once you start doing design work and actually sewing, you know, you'll be burning midnight oil like I have. You know, trying to rush around right before Powell's actually to finish up an outfit. Um, you know, heat bond is is awesome. And the crazy part, you know, if I hate to say it, you know, I've actually seen people that will actually just heat bond material if they're really in a rush and not even sew it and tack it down. Usually that'll last for about a good day. I mean, it's not recommended by my standards anyway. But, you know, I have done, you know, like some design work where for myself that, you know, I've just heat bonded it and, you know, went to the Powell dance for a little bit. And when I got back to my hotel room, I started sewing it up so I could actually tack it down. Um, it'll last for a little bit. It's kind of like a band-aid, but I would never recommend it to continue on with your work. It's just kind of like a little thought. Now, I have used other materials and other um, adhesives. Uh, there's one that I've kind of used before. It kind of has a backing with a, uh, I kind of would say like a uh, felt material. Um, I, I've used that and I used to use that in the beginning of my work. I don't really recommend it because the sharp edges really don't come out as fluent as you can with heat bond. Um, plus, there's always that kind of felt background. And when you start to stack material, it just it adds another piece of material into your equation, which doesn't really correlate when, um, when you try to sew it down. It kind of comes out a little bumpy, and sometimes it'll throw your needle off. And some, some, when you actually do sew, it will um, kind of, the, the sewing stitch won't actually come out fluent as far as um, when you do work with heat bond. So what I have here is one of the designs I've done, you know, uh, from here, you know, my vest, I use a lot of the horses and buffaloes and stuff. And to kind of give you a good idea of how uh, heat bond works, I have like one of the extra horses that I do have. Um, a lot of the times I like to cut out a lot of designs. Um, say if I work with a lot of horses, what I'll do is um, using my heat bond, I'll draw so many horses, you know, 10 to 20 at a time and it's just like on my spare time I'll just sit there watch TV and trace out horses because you know if I ever have to re like recap and actually go back and need a horse you know I've already got one drawn out because once you start using this and transferring your design it is kind of time consuming and I just find it really easy to actually already have it on hand. Here is actually one of our horses uh, that we're working with and the other thing that you're going to work with heat bond is uh, you're actually going to actually have to remember what side you're working with, uh, your left to your right. Uh, once you do apply this, you know, this horse, you would probably say would probably be running, you know, like uh, left. Um, if you do a design that uh, encompasses left and right, you will actually have to remember like to heat bond it on the right side because once you have the glue on there, it'll come back on the left side. And you'll kind of understand what I'm meaning once you start doing your design work because it'll come out backwards. And you'll be like, all right, now I know what he's talking about. And sometimes I have to do my design work backwards to actually get it to see where I want it to. So going with this, um, you can see on my, on my piece here, I have several horses on here. And the way I've got it to actually sit is um, these ones are different places and I like to do this one sporadically. Um, this one being my ledger work, uh, this kind of a newer style that I, I kind of started doing. Um, this one, you know, as far as placement, I kind of just place this randomly. There's not really a set place for all these people and all these horses and all like uh, the buffalo. This re really, you know, what I'm trying to do is actually uh, do a picture of something that happened a long time ago. But uh, what we usually do for these horses, what I have is like, uh, you know, I have my extra horse here. And say, you know, if I wanted to add it to a certain place, you know, I'd find a good spot to where I want it to. And this one has already been heat bond and already been cut out. As you can see, you know, like it's really stiff. And sometimes uh, when you do heat bond, um, you'll, this is another thing I kind of forgot to mention, that uh, sometimes you will get air gaps and air bubbles in these materials. Um, what you'll need to do, and it's real simple to do, is kind of turn your, uh, your iron a little bit hotter and try to iron it a little bit more and gradually you'll gradually push the air bubble out of the material and, and that's the way um, your material will be perfectly flat. So henceforth, don't, don't freak out if you start to heat bond, you start to get air bubbles in it. 
It's very common, you know, I get them all the time. You know, all I do is just keep continuing ironing them out and usually the heat bond will actually get all the bubbles out. Now, it's, it's actually a good idea once you get everything perfect not to mess with the heat bond because you can actually cause wrinkles in it if you start to move it around. So usually after I iron, I just tend to leave the material alone so it actually cools. And you can see on both sides of this, this is actually the material, this, the, the heat bond. And if you start to pull the paper away, you'll see that the adhesive is actually on the other side. Now, the, you know, this is the part that I said, you know, you can actually get bubbles inside of it. But perfectly, you know, this allows you to uh, um, um, iron onto another piece of material and wherever you want to place it, it'll stay. And uh, the cool part is, you know, it doesn't move around. So when you start to sew, it doesn't lap or it doesn't move and it will stay perfectly flat for you to actually tack down uh, with your sewing machine. That's awesome. You know, because you don't like to use a lot of material that moves around. You know, it took a lot of burnt material for me to get where I'm at, so don't threat. You know, it's kind of a growing pain. You, from there, you know, you're only learning on how to actually work with the materials itself. Like I said, you know, some materials are more delicate than others, you know, like velvets, um, you know, velvets like satins, cottons, all, you know, can actually handle the higher temperature. From here, you know, I kind of understand on how, what materials do work with uh, high temperatures and which don't. Now we're at the part where we're actually going to transfer our design to the heat bond. Um, this is the legwork where um, it's going to take you a lot of time, and this is what actually uh, is the most time consuming. Once you actually get to the sewing part of it, sewing is very easy because it's just sewing. You know, realistic, you're just tacking the material onto material, and it really doesn't take that much time. But you'll learn to do uh, to actually design something and to transfer your material. The legwork is actually the most time-consuming part. The cool part is, you know, we've already gone through and actually designed our, our geometric teepee. Um, now what we're going to do is transfer it onto the uh, heap on, and pretty much what we're going to do is just trace, and that's the coolest part about it. And then I'll show you actually how to cut it out. Now, henceforth, when we do cut it out, we don't want to cut it out um, detailed-wise. What I mean by details is you don't actually want to cut the material, um, I mean, the heat bond exact right here. Uh, we'll do that later, you know, um, it takes all, uh, that takes away a whole step because if you do transfer it onto material and you cut it out exact, then you actually have to cut it exactly the way it is out of the uh, material. Henceforth, what I like to do is actually um, trace this out and once I um, transfer it onto my material, I'll cut around here, you know, all the way around. And then once I have that piece, then I can cut into it and make it a cut exactly what I want it to. Um, that way, you know, it cuts out like a whole step into it and you can continue on. So let's get started um, to actually trace out your design. Now, like I said, you know, this is just like paper, which is awesome because, you know, you can pretty much do any kind of design that you want. Um, it allows you to do uh, really, really detailed work as far as like straight lines, um, curves, uh, just about anything because, you know, this is just like paper pretty much what I think about it. Now, what we're going to do on this first part, this is going to be, you know, your geometric TP. This is going to be your outer piece. And so, henceforth, this, this, this base and the actual top part are going to be the same color. So what I like to do, instead of actually uh, tracing this huge triangle and then tracing this individually, um, what I like to do, and this will also save you time and save me material, is what I'll do is revert it back to a triangle. And what we'll do is just trace the outer part of here and then we'll cut this out again and that'll be just one piece. Because, you know, that way you'll save material and save time actually cutting it out. So what we'll do is we'll start here to trace this out. And all you do is just take your pencil trace up and you don't have to be perfect, you know, I, like Sometimes you'll see a lot of my, um, my, a lot of my templates. You'll see runoffs and stuff like that, and that's cool because you, know, you know this is just your template. This is your own work. You know you don't have to worry about it. You know because you know you can mess these things up, 
And like I said, you know, like a lot of times I'll like to masking tape this so I can use them again and again. And a lot of my pieces, you know, they'll have runoffs and stuff like that. But this will always come out perfect, and that's the cool part about it. You know, these templates, you know, these are kind of your workhorses of it. And like I said, to save time, what we're going to do is actually just take this on top of here and then trace on top. This will cut our design just in two. So, henceforth, we got our outer design um, already um, transferred onto the heap on. And like I said, you know, what we're going to do is when we do cut, we are actually going to cut around. So what I'll do is instead of cutting in like detailed wise here, 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 we're just going to cut this out around. And that saves us a whole step because what we'd have to do is if you cut this exactly out and transfer it onto the material, then you actually have to cut again exactly out. But see, if you just cut around it and then transfer it onto material, you just cut one time and you're done. So the next one up is this design here. This is going to be our, um, our first uh, internal design of our TP, which is just another triangle. And we're going to do the same thing with that, you know, not cut this out detailed wise, but just cut around the material, saving time and so, and here's our other piece. Here's our steps. A little mess up there. Doesn't really matter because no one's really going to see it. And we're done. And one final one. We'll just use this one. Sometimes I like to change sides, and that way, you know, I don't you know, really. Um, I like to save a lot of my heap on, and I always work with the, the outer side because you know this is a straight corner, and you know you really don't have to measure it. Sometimes when I do cut, as you can see, like right here, you know, it's not really flush and it's not very um, perfect. But you know, you can always understand that you know this very edge is always going to be perfect, so I don't really have to rely on that. Let's see. And we're done. So now we got um, our four pieces um, transferred onto the heat bond. So we're going to start with just starting to cut these out. And like I said, you know, if you can coax like a small kid or you know, like maybe one of your relatives, you know, cut this out, it'd be awesome because usually this is the time-consuming part of like everything. A lot of my nieces and nephews know not to come over to my house because I usually put them to work. And they don't really find this fun. I usually go, hey, yeah, this is real fun. And usually they learn that it's not really fun after a while. They're like, when can I quit? And I'm like, I'm not done yet. But, all right. So we got our pieces here. Like I said, you know, we don't cut out exact until we actually uh, transfer it onto material. From here, like I said, we're going to pick out a material real quick, and from there, we're going to transfer it using the iron. Um, so in this outside design, I think we're going to go with an orange. Um, you know, and from there, we're going to go um, interchanging colors as far as lightest to darkest to actually bring out the design work internally. Um, so let me get my material real quick, and I'm going to transfer it onto uh, with using the iron. I'll show you how to do that. Now we're at the segment where we're actually going to transfer our design that we did uh, from our heat bond actually to our sap material. Right now we're going to work with this uh, pretty beautiful orange sap material. Like I said, you know, I like working with satins because you know they don't bunch up. I don't. I hate working with uh, um, with uh, anything stretchy. As far as spandex, won't ever work with it because um, I can't actually do my design work with spandex. Uh, Reason henceforth is that you know it doesn't really work really with uh, well with irons, and plus uh, once you do start to tack uh, down with your sewing machine, um, it's hard to actually get the ma material to sit well. Uh, meaning sometimes it bunches up, and sometimes your design will come and come out kind of crooked sometimes. So I don't really like to work with satins. Um, 
So getting started with this, you know, we're going to uh, prep this up uh, before we actually uh, transfer this material, uh, our design on here. And of course, you know, once you get this from a material factory, sometimes, you know, it is wrinkled. So what I like to do is pre-iron this and get everything flat. So what we'll do is, you know, it's just two-sided. Of course, we're going to use uh, this as far as the design work and keep the, the flat part, the dark part on this side. So I'm going to take my iron. And if working with kids, you know, like, like I said, you know, I like to employ my nieces and nephew to cut out my designs. Uh, working with the iron is probably something that you should do because they can burn their fingers. Just to be clear, I abide by all child labor laws. <laughs> So this one you might want to do on your own. Try to get as many, um, as much as like uh, wrinkles out as possible, because once you do transfer your material onto uh, to heat bond, the heat bond will is really hard sometimes to get like wrinkles out that you could have got out beforehand. What I'm talking about is the wrinkles here. You can kind of still see them. You want to get this perfectly flat and actually perfectly ironed out. We got this pretty much as best as we can get it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this as far as I can to the edge. And the only reason why I do this is per it's kind of a preferable thing is that I like to use and save a lot of my material and that way you know it's kind of a cost efficient way to do it. So I'll try to push this as far as the edge as I can. And slowly what we're going to do is just iron this on. Now this is going to take a couple strokes to do, you know, to get it perfectly flat and flush. But it will come out perfect. Now, as you can see, right here, you know, we've already transferred like uh, our heat bond onto our material. And so from here, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to uh, cut this material out and then we'll have our design perfect and ready to go to actually sew or add our other internal designs on top of here. So, let me get my scissors out. Let's see. First, I like to do is what I'll do is I'll cut around the material and just cut it out. This allows me to actually get more detail when I do do my cut, and plus, you know, I don't have to worry about this. Usually, working with this, you know, you want to get you don't want to cut it out detailed here because it's kind of hard to work around this material if you're working with a lot of it. So now that we've actually singled this material out, it's a whole lot easier to cut out. And we just pretty much just follow like our tack marks that we drew out. Cut there, there. And this is what I'm talking about using heat bond because, you know, it allows you to cut your designs out perfectly. And if you see, like, you know, the edges are very, very sharp. You know, there's no rough edges, there's no rounded or, you know, it's very exact. And there we go. Now, usually what I'll do is I'll turn this over and I'll kind of like inspect my material. Look for any, you know, creases, like we have some here. You know, a couple creases there. Not really too many heat bomb, heat bomb bubbles, so that's a good thing. Um, the cool part is just to remove those is just to use the iron over and over. And gradually, you know, it'll, it'll push all the creases out and the bubbles out. So. You know, kind of inspect your material, you know, from there, you know, you can kind of see a crease right here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of push it out with the iron as best I can. Now, it's always good that, you know, it, when you do work with heat bond, to allow the material and um, the actual, like, adhesive to actually cool. You don't want to move it around too much, you know, once you do iron it. Usually I like to just push it over to the side. Because if you do pick it up, you know, you can bow it or, you know, like just the actual motion of it uh, will actually cause creases too. And then you'll have to re-iron it over and over again. So, let it sit for a little bit, let it cool, and then you can start working with it. But pretty much this is uh, how we're going to do like all our other pieces. We're going to, um, all our internal designs right here, we're going to actually transfer um, uh, our um, uh, heat bond onto here. And then we're going to actually pull the adhesive off, um, well, the paper side, and actually stack it onto our material. So now we got our design, you know, transferred over, uh, worked around with our heat bond. Um, like I said, you know, once we do iron it, I like to let it sit for a minute because uh, I don't like to pick it up 
because sometimes when you do transfer it, it will cause uh, to actually um, have like little gaps in there or have little lines and stuff or the, sometimes the material will just shape out funk, uh, kind of funky. So I like to let it sit for a minute, let it cool. Um, once again, you know, after I do that, I inspect it again, make sure I got all the bubbles out and whatnot. But uh, from here, we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing with the other materials, the internal designs for the uh, geometric cheapie. Um, from there, I'm going to uh, correlate lightest to darkest colors to try to give a little bit of flow as far as our color scheme. Um, but we're going to get into that on our next show. Um, once again, you know, um, thank you for uh, tuning in. My name is Joaquin Lone Lodge and can't wait to have you again um, see how like uh, this design is going to come out. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.